Auto-Tune is actually just a product name for a pitch corrector from Andreas. What we're actually going to look at is a pitch correction plugin that works in real time. It's very easy to use and it can really help you lift up, elevate, tune and detail your vocals in the way you want. If your vocalist sings ever so slightly out, you can use that subtle correction. If you want to do the T-Pain Post Malone effect, that is available to us too. So I'm going to go over how to use it in a nice, easy, understandable fashion. Let's have a look at what we're working on. I've picked this track of mine for a particular reason. It's got a main lead vocal that runs across the whole track. It's got a backing vocal on that and then it's got two sets of ad-libs in this hook section. Oh, quickly, not only am I going to show you how to set up auto-tune easily to tune vocals, I want to show you a sneaky little trick you can use to sort of elevate your production in a way that you probably didn't think using pitch correction at the end of the video after the vocal bit. So we're going to start basic one vocal and then build upon that. So let's have a look and a quick listen here to this hook section. Now I want to quickly explain my chain because in a lot of cases you're going to want to have the pitch correction plugin right here as the very first one in the chain. You want to be correcting that pitch control first in a lot of cases. I want to quickly explain why I haven't done that and why it might be beneficial to you in these certain situations as well. So the first thing is I've got a gain in here. I'm taking the vocal back a lot. Um, it was recorded really, really heavy. It was like right up near zero. And as you can see, and as you can see on the double up vocal here, the other lead, I've got the gain plugin and I've still had to drop it down 11 dB on the fader, which is just ridiculous. So that's why gain's in there first, controlling those overall levels. I could do that with clip gain in the inspector. I chose to do with a plugin here. So I've got a visual indicator, but like, oh right, I've gained this. I know I'm bringing it down, putting it up, doing whatever. It's just a visual indicator for me. It doesn't matter where you gain it. The next thing in that chain is a gate. There was noise, clicks and pops between a lot of the phrases. Now you can see from the audio, I've cut a lot of that out and put fades in but those noises they go into the pitch corrector and it tries to correct them so getting those out of the way from the offset before we're going to pitch correction absolutely and the next one before we've got to the pitch correction is a de -esser. so when you've got a sibilant sound it controls those there were lots of this which means the pitch detector is going to detect those and then try and pitch them and you get kind of a weird like shh kind of noise going on, not nice. Correct those first before we go into it. Otherwise, you've got a good vocal recording that's right sort of there as you need it, just a bit of correction. Have that pitch correction in there first. So let's actually look at the tools now like we're supposed to be doing. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the pitch correction on this vocal here and we're going to set it up from scratch. So I've got those three plugins in, I'm going to put it in this gap here and we're going to focus on just this part here. So it's not too distracting. I'm going to turn off the auxiliary as well. So now we should be dry. So in Logic, we can go down to Pitch, and in here we have Pitch Correction, that is our tool. If you're using 11.1, they've added this lovely feature right here where I can just type Pitch, uh, and then Pitch Correction is gonna show right up at the top, and we can bring it in that way. Now, a really common mistake that a lot of you make when you put Pitch Correction on, you're like, oh, it's not working. Let me explain that real quick. We first need to tell it the key we're expecting things to be in. First, we need to tell it the key that we're going to be in. In this particular track, we're in G major. So first thing we do, right up the top where it says root note, we're going to put that onto G. And then a chromatic scale here, we can do major scale. And that's going to highlight those notes for us and show us the scale we're in. It's blacked out the notes that do not exist in the G major scale. So the G major is very, very similar to C major, all the white notes, except we end up swapping the F for the F sharp. And you can see that represented right in front of us here. Now that means 
If the pitch detection now detects a note coming into F, it will pitch it upwards to F sharp. If it is a certain amount of semitones below F, it will pitch it down to E. And that tolerance and response time happens around here. Now this by default comes in at 122 milliseconds. I like to set this in divisions that are relevant to the music that you are currently working on. So for me, working here at 174 BPM, things like 10, 20, 40 and 80 are all good time frames that I can work in. If you're working on something that's say 128 BPM or 90, you can go a lot more and have it move in and out of those time frames. A really good way to work that <clears throat> you can work this out by doing a very simple calculation, which is BPM divided by 60,000 will give you the milliseconds, or you can use a tool called Audio Calc that will give you divisions in 16th, eighths, one fourth, like that. I'll link that down below, really useful tool. Now in the updated version of Logic, we have this thing here called Neural Pitch Detection. I recommend leaving that on. It's way better at detecting the vocality and the notes that are coming into it than the previous versions of Logic. However, the exception to that is bass tones. If you've got like a real baritone vocalist or you're trying to tune a bass instrument that for some reason was a bit out of tune, I'd switch that off and we take the pitch range and put that down to low. It does a much better job there. But for a vocal, leave it on normal, keep neural pitch detection on. I'm going to set this to be around 80. So it's giving us 84 milliseconds there. Um, if you type in, it will sometimes even snap to like the nearest. It doesn't ever give you exactly what you want. I don't know why. And the tolerance here. So if something is 10 cents out of being tuned, it won't really touch it. It'll allow that. And in something like a vocal, that's pretty natural. We'll hear that and it will ebb and flow and move out slightly. If you want the T-Pain effect, you need to have that right down at zero slammed in. Or you can push it up quite a bit if the vocal is something that's quite acoustic, it isn't harmonizing with anything else, you can get away with that a bit more. It, you're gonna have to do it by ear and adjust it to where you want. 10 cents here should be fine. Tuning, I'm gonna leave that on global tuning. And detune, we don't want to detune this. You would use this if, say, you were working in a specific type of tuning for something else and you need to tune everything up to that particular range. Most of the time, 99.9% .9 of you are going to be in 4.4 and you're going to be in standard tuning. You can just leave it there. If you're not working in those while you're watching this video, you're way above that. So now, when we play this vocal back, it will represent for us where each note is landing. And we can see in between notes, she often shifts over to D sharp here. And you can hear those S's really go off the note as well, which is why that DS is in there beforehand. Now if we do show pitch and change it to output, it will show us the correction that it's always on those notes. Now I want to show you why the response time is so important. If we put that down to zero and we put our tolerance down to zero, listen to the difference in how unnatural it will sound. There's distinctly what we call the auto-tune sound, right? Yeah, it is robotic. Now if we put just the tolerance of 10 cents in, it lets it fluctuate a little bit. And that's because it's trying to bring the tuning of the vocal in immediately in 0.00 milliseconds. It, boom, right dead on tune. If we have no tolerance, it is only allowing it to sit precisely on the frequency that that note should be. There's no ebb and flow between. Every natural instrument ebb and flows and has a tolerance of a few cents. You play a string on the best tuned violin, it ebbs and flows. It does not sit precisely in that note all the time. It's one of the reasons that a orchestra has so many, um, <clears throat> so one of the reasons that when you have an orchestra with all those different violins, cellos, etc., all lined up, they create that massive overwhelming sound because everyone's just slightly moving in and out all the time, depending on how hard they press the bow, how smooth they did, etc. Everything has that naturalness. That's why it sounds so robotic when we hammer it down like that. Now the response time, even if we just give this 20 milliseconds, it will sound hugely different. Yeah, it's still got a bit of that robotic tone, 
but it's taking that 20 milliseconds to tune each note. And it means when we transfer from one note to the other, it's got 20 milliseconds to flow into one and the other. Now, if we put that in context of the rest of the track, let me just mute these vocals. You can hear it's a little off, right? So that's why I was more in this kind of region here. And now when it's moving quickly between some of those, it's too much. So, we'll find a middle ground in around the 40s. So now we're not getting that robotic effect and it's not going way, 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 way between different notes. It's got enough time to happily transition with the pace of the music and the pace of the singer. The 10, uh, 10 cents in tolerance allows the notes to wobble a little bit in between without it being nailed back down or accidentally slipping over to the next note. So now we've set that particular one back up. I'm just gonna put our bosses and our delay back on. What about now if we also had the double up, but we didn't pitch correct it? Can you hear the phasing? Now this can be a really desired effect. I have to think way back here, but if I um, go back to like 2013, I did a Tegan and Sarah remix, or was it Sarah and Tegan? It's Tegan and Sarah, right? And I did this kind of thing on their double dot vocals where I really tuned one, let the other one be natural. And it kind of harmonized and worked really nice. In this kind of track, you want these to be right bang on each other. So if we pitch correct this, but in this case, I've done it slower. So it happens over nearly 90 milliseconds. So we get that transition phase being a little bit different and now it tunes a lot better. Now I've also done the same thing to the harmonies, even though they're hard left and hard right. Yeah, and I think they're done a little bit quicker or a little bit slower, I don't remember. Uh, and they're both done slower as well with the same exactly the same settings, but these guys haven't got the neural pitch detection on because they're just short, they happen off to the side. Having it off allowed that little bit of wobble and spread to work in the vocal, which isolated doesn't sound perfect. But in context of the track worked really nicely. And that, right, and that right there, guys, is the easy way to use the pitch corrector in Logic to get your vocals or really any instrument in tune that you want. Now that you've got your vocals all tuned and your track is sounding mwah, you might be ready to get it out to the world and distribute it to all those major streaming platforms. And you can do that with the channel sponsor, which is DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. Here's my sneaky tip for the video. I will often do this to tune a kick drum in a particular time with a track. 
We can make use of having that tiny little uh, gap in how quick it can tune, give it like 10 milliseconds for the transient to snap through, and then tune the rest of the kick drum so it sits in line with everything else. It's a really cheeky little trick that works quite a lot. Let me see if I can demo it in this track for you, where I've got the kick drum right here. I'm gonna put the pitch corrector on the kick drum here. Uh, let me isolate the drums bus. <coughs> So we can see here that the kick drum in this track sits on C sharp, but our track's in G. So let's use a key that would be in G. Now we looked before, um, C sharp isn't in there, is it? The only sharp note would be F. So let's just do this manually. We can click on these notes and, and take them out. <clears throat> and now if we tune it to C, it's probably gonna be a better way to go for us. And if we do the response time really, really quickly, sort of 10 milliseconds, let the transient through. Listen to the difference. Tuning it down just that little bit so it sits in key with the rest of the track. <clears throat> 